Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can choose. Ah! Hey, hey, folks. We're doing it. We're here. We're queer. That might have been a little loud for the neighbor, but mm. we're not going to be here for a week. You're off on a private jet plane. Yep. Well, not private. Let's be honest. Yeah, no, it's commercial, but uh, yeah, it's exciting. I'm flying tonight. I'm nervous. I don't like doing things on a flight. We're very different kinds of guys. No, you know? I, I feel it. But don't you feel like if you get there, you beat the system? Well, it feels good. You know, I'm flying the shows tomorrow, and people are going to be livid when they find out what show I'm talking about because it oh, happened six months ago. Don't say it. They're very upset. And um, he's but, opening for. Uh... Ah, I got Sinbad. Nothing. There you go. Um, but uh, the show's tomorrow. I'm flying in tonight. I love a fly in the day before New Year's gig. That's what I was meant to say. Because if there's if there's a delay or whatever, you're just you're coasting. I love being at the lounge when you don't have a show that night. Ah, so it feels good. But uh, I had an appointment before this, and now this, and then the bonus, and then I got the the flight starts ticking, it's clicking yes. and ticking. Yes, hate a tick or a beep. Well, because I just had this last week, a couple weeks ago, and I, I alluded to it. I was flying from Seattle to Houston. I had to fly through Salt Lake City. Ah, connection. And then the uh, a, initial flight was delayed, so it threw it all off. So then I had five hours to kill. So I called my friend. Five hours? I know. It was a mess. So I called my friend Erica. It was Derek's wife, my friend as well. Ah, and I said, Derica. hey, I got, yeah, that's what we call him. It's oh, fun. Oh, hey, there you go. Who was the first couple to do the combined name? Was it Benifer or... J-Law? J-Lo? No. That's that, is, that is Benifer. Ben it was Benifer, was Benifer but what was that Brad That was Brangelina. Pitt? Brangelina. That was big. That was before Was that Benifer? first? Well, Puff, she, he was in like a music video with Jennifer Lopez in like the 90s, right? P. Diddy. No, no, this is uh, Ben Affleck. Oh, well, he was in a music video. Yeah, he was. He was in like one of her old ones, like Jenny from the Block. I think it was. Oh, wow. oh yeah, the he whole rubs video, her ass on a boat. Yes, yeah, the whole video revolves around paparazzi following her around. Yes, and yes. Ben Affleck's in it. Was he Ben Affleck at the time? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he it was, was about fa- them. making out with her. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Feeling her up. Benifer. What, what would he be? Jark. Hey, Jark's yeah. not bad. Or Mo. Or joke. No, Jark or or Mo. Yeah. Is that what you said? said? Okay. Yeah. I think Mo. Jark is better. Jark is good. Sounds but like an alien. But people will be all upset. Oh, Joe's first. Oh, he gets geez. to go first. Jark, but, Jark, uh, Bing. It, it works <laughs> better. And you get more letters. I like Jark. Jark. Jark is good. All right, we're Jark. Yeah, or Listman. Uh. All right, all right. Jark Listman. <laughs> you got Clarkman. <laughs> That's a misprint. <laughs> um, I got a picture in here, baby. Picture All right. perfect. Catcher. Yeah. Oh, careful. Don't, oh, my God. That was scary. Ooh, no, okay. How about that waiter who gets a little nutty with the water bottle oh, and the yeah. water pitcher? You're like, All right, man. I remember going to Friendlies as a kid. You, got, oh. you guys didn't have Friendlies, but you've you've heard of it. I didn't have friends either. Great. Great ice cream. Have you oh, been there up sure. in New England I've with the Friendlies? Oh, the yeah. Is of... that Carvel? No, it's oh, Friendlies. Friendly. Is that its own thing? Yeah, Friendlies. Got it. It's called Carvel sucks. Fuck Carvel. Really? Yeah. Uh, maybe it's good. Whatever you guys like, I like. But isn't it ice cream cake? Yeah, it's great. Okay, well, maybe it's great. Whatever you think. You got to cut through it with a buzz saw, though. It's rock hard. I thought it was melty. Well, it's that bad ice cream, that that gelatiny kind of that Dairy Queen. Ding, ding, ding. You know, it's, it's almost too doughy. Ah, uh, like, like Chuck. Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> but I think Dairy Queen, when I was a kid, back when I was banging up in New sure. England or Massachusetts, Dairy Queen didn't have food, which blows Sarah's mind. What? We had ice cream only Dairy Queen. Got it. Like when I traveled and was like burgers at Dairy Queen. Right. Another Bobka? <laughs> I, my mind was blown. Well, they're not great burgers. Let's be honest. It's, it's, a, it's a connection to the ice cream. Uh, they said, hey, we're doing all right. Let's throw a burger on the grill, make it even more money. But the burgers stink. So the burgers came second. It's ancillary. What's that mean? I wish I knew. Uh, 
Look, give that a goog. Ancillary. It's a, it's a satellite, or it's a ah, it's an extra. A, it's a, an add-on. Okay, like Chuck again. There you go. So it's an ancillary <laughs> burger. Yes, yes. I've still never eaten yeah. at Dairy Queen. It is like me, providing necessary support to the primary activities. All right, that's, that's, that's not that's ancillary. That's not it. That's yeah, not it. Yeah, it's the, just an add-on. They figure, hey, we can do we get more out of this. Okay. Throw a burger on the grill. Gotcha. Well, anyways, I yes. never had one. I'm sure they got tater tots over there. Sure, fries. Yeah, Coca Cola. How do you feel about Sonic? You know, it seems like fun. They got a whore <laughs> on a skate. It's outdoors. They put a tray on your window, but I don't know. It's all the same. It's just cheesy tots. Whoa. And they always make a big deal out of it. We got the mudslide, icy, or whatever. And you're like, all right, it's just sugar and jizz. I don't even think they give you the tray. You're thinking of vacation. That I think that's like in the graduate and the vacation. I, like, I go to Sonic. They just hand you a bag, like oh, Burger King. Oh, maybe you're right. That tray was always a little rickety. Yeah, well, new car, new car. <laughs> they had the vacation <laughs> bit. <laughs> new car, but I yeah. thought of a Sonic bit, oh, a visual. Okay. Not, a, not a bit, but like a, a gag, a, a video of a scene. The hedgehog? Where you go. Now a different guy. Mm. I liked him, though, when yeah. he would do the... Sure, I think he was messed up, and then he had tails. Oh, that's he right. Was a little the little guy. orange guy. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of that was a scrappy dude. There was always the little guy they had with him. That's me. No, you're you're tall. Jerk. True. Well, I, I thought of a, a funny bit. You go to Sonic and then you order at the window and then you know, the camera's over there and I go, What do you want? A, a bag of shit and a dog. Okay, let me get this. And then they go, Okay, it's nine eighty eight. And just out of habit, you just go, Okay, great. And you go, Whoop. And you slam into the building. Oh, that's fun. That's a good gag. Yeah, well, those Sonic guys, remember them? They were hot. Oh, forget about it. That was the biggest commercial in advertising. And then everybody's like, are they gay? What's the deal? But those guys must have made 10 mil on that. Yeah, I think so. He was a UCB guy. I've been on a show with him before. That that was the golden, that was the dream, was to be like a a performer and get get some commercial, like Flow, Progressive, or uh, the the AT&T gal. That's big money right there. Yeah, that's exciting. But then you're stuck as that person, I think. I guess so. Matt McCarthy, though. Remember him? Yeah, I remember. I talked to him quite a bit. He was, oh, really? Well, occasionally. Good, good egg. Look him up. Give him a go. I mean, his commercial resume is like Schindler's List. It just... Yes, too long. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Lisbon. Uh, what was I talking about? I too can't short even remember. Uh, oh, I, so no, I was at the airport there, uh-huh. killing five hours. So I called my friend Erica, Derica, sure. which led us to Benefer, which led us to wherever the fuck. Jerk. So <laughs> I call her. I go, I got a five-hour layover, and she goes, Well, I just happen to have gone to Target right next to the airport. She goes, I'll come back and scoop you up. How often do you have this? Wow. The drop off through security, get to the lounge, and the friend is still nearby. So you leave the airport. What? Yeah. Because I got like four hours to kill. So you got to go back through security. Obviously. I know. That's all I'm thinking about. Yeah. That's what made me think of this because today I, we're doing this, but I got a flight. That's how I felt. We went, we went out to breakfast, which wow. was nice, and had a nice breakfast, a waffle, and the thing. We made out a little, and then we went to the beach and walked up and down beach? the beach. Yeah, because it's it was, Seattle is right on the on the coast. Is that right? Yeah, well, it's on a coast. It's uh-huh. not the coast, I guess. Yeah, Jim but Costa. It, well, we walked up and down the beach. I'm, I'm skipping rocks, but the whole time, I'm just having an anxiety attack, because you're looking at the thing like, I got to go back through security. Is traffic going to be gay? Whatever. At least you're pre-check, no shoe off. Pre-check, clear. The whole thing, the works. And now there's a new thing, by the way, that's like Face ID. Ooh, what's this? It's just popped up last night. It says opt in or opt out. And you know mm. me, I'm opting right in. Yeah, opt in my ass. I've never heard of this opt. Op in. Look at this digital ID right here. Digital ID. I don't know what it is, but. The airport's <coughs> turning into Disneyland. You got the fast pass, you got the, or you can wait in the regular line. It's just, wh- which one is it? It's like Louis' bit. Louis got that great bit about, uh, he had a uh, some clay, and they were like, "Whoa, this could be C four. We're taking this." And he's like, "It's gonna sit here. Is it a bomb or is it not a bomb?" Right? You know, like if you had a bomb at the airport, they wouldn't go. Like you got to make a choice here. If it's really harmful, get a guy with a suit on and the clamp things, you know, to come in there with the dog, and the, he walks slowly, and they put it in a bin, and they walk it outside. That's a bomb. Yes. Or me Saturday night. Yes. But either way, which one is it? Yeah, that's a good point. I don't remember that bit. Oh, it's a great bit. He's got some pearls on that one. That new Which one, though, with the garden. 
Oh, that's from just now. Yeah. Oh, I haven't. That's why I don't know it. Oh, you don't know this one? No, I haven't seen oh, it. Oh, he's got some great stuff. Oh boy, I got to watch it. So you watched the garden thing? I Are like comedy. No, I I got a free. Uh, you know. Ah, uh, I knew something was amiss here. <laughs> well, Sally had a link. <laughs> oh yeah, that illegal cable. He's always pushing that on me. Shh. Well, whatever you mentioned it. I didn't say the name. Some guy yesterday emailed and was like, who's this Salacuse? I want to dive into his work and, and know more about him. Like, you're not going to care for the work. No, It's bad photos work. of exhibit or whatever. Sure, sure. <laughs> He's got some decent pics. Yeah, whatever. How hard is it to take a pic? That's true. Point and shoot. More of a decent hang. Good hang, bad hair. I like the hair. Ah, you're the one. He's got like Hulk Hogan hair. Mm. It's a little bald, but it's like long over here. Yeah, a little Michael Bolton. Yeah, long overdue for a trim yeah the back's bad does he like this when we trash him a little i it's don't know be nice, I we, think. we blew him up last week with the with the he's a trooper he's on his knees he's blowing a guy he's kaepernick uh, he's shooting point and shoot with the hobo why are yeah. you homeless yeah i think so and now we trash it's a even steven uh, yeah <laughs> i think it balances chuck's great got a balance got a balance uh that'll cover the uh <laughs> twenty thousand hours of trashing i'm gonna make a super cut no good haircut <laughs> place that's what salicuse needs yeah um, fantastic sam's but any tits i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about but my, my point is we had breakfast we had the thing then i went back how about this this I, is great i love you You're utilizing your day i tried to maximize then i go back to the lounge like you know you got to get there early so i spent another hour at the lounge wow that, it was a long thing. Then I, I fly to Salt Lake City. I got four hours in that lab. It was like one of the longest travel days of my life. Yeah. But they got some good shit there. And then I'm texting with Rana on random. You know, I like to check in with folks. And he goes, yeah, man, I had a long day, too. I was sitting at the Seattle Delta Lounge for mm. like an hour. And I was like, I was at the Seattle Delta Lounge for an hour. I go, when what were you there? The he was like, hell? I was there from 11 to noon. And I was like, I was there from 11 to noon. How big's his lounge? Decent size. You've been to the lounge. Similar like the LaGuardia Lounge. Okay, okay. But if oh, but you're big. sitting there's there's little bubbles and chair and you're not looking That's for, true. I'm not looking for Rana. And you want to be left alone. You don't want to talk to anybody. Exactly. And, and I'm sure he wasn't talking. If he was talking to someone, I'd know he's there because right. he's a little noisy. Sure, he's a verbose. Yes. Booming. Booming. Booming lisp. Yeah. Joe Lisp. Yeah. But I didn't know he was there. But anyways, you find out one of your buddies was there. And you're That's like, wild. fuck. Of all the lounges in all the world. Yes. You guys are lounge lizards. Gin joints. Now, if he's in the lounge, we got to up the uh, the standards for getting in the lounge. Well, He's a 12-inch chubby weird Jew. I mean, come on. We got to have some scruples here. I think we talked about this. I'm a little resentful because a lot of people get in through the card. Uh, yes, exactly. You buy a credit card. And you get in. I'm doing it old school with the miles, putting the miles in, sure. spending the money. Anyone can just get a card. <laughs> <laughs> well, how how do you get? Because I got I'm platinum, so I might be in already. No, platinum doesn't get you in. No, you need diamond. Diamond. Well, platinum might. There's some stuff with platinum. All right. But diamond, I found out I didn't know how to utilize my shit. I got four hundred dollars worth of vouchers and lounge access for the year plus a guest. Diamond is big. Here. Diamond is big. Yeah. Diamond District. All right. All right. Well, let me try without the card. I want to see if I, because I think I'm in. I'm gold with Delta or platinum with Delta. And then whatever's the highest on um, ancillary on United, whatever that is. Well, United's not going to help you into the Delta lounge. They're rivals. No, but they got their own lounge. Oh, yeah. And it's a fucking trash heap in there. (laughs) They got cheese and crackers and Doritos and a cup of soup. Cup of soup, Jerry. I mean, that's trash. Yeah, the C- give that to a hobo. The Seattle Lounge, not as good. They don't not consistent. These lounges. The Seattle Lounge has like make your own oatmeal. It's like a little packets. Oh, I don't you like dump a packet. the hot water on there. Ah, oh, hate packets. And then Laguardia has like a big bucket of stew. Yes, give me the stew. <laughs> Green Bay packets. I don't. I don't like it. I want the stew. I feel bad. There's a bunch of people sitting at home and uh, working a forklift going. We still talking about the lounge? Yeah, no, I know. They hate us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they can't win. Uh, what can you do? Well, where you been? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we recorded a podcast 26 hours ago. Well, I got to tell you, Fatty, I am hurting. I feel like a gay guy after his first roll in the hay because my hammies are hurting. My ass is sore. I'm bleeding. I could I could barely get out of bed this morning. I was like... I was in I was in shock or what do you call it traction? Traction. What is traction? Traction, I think, is when they they really 
tape you up in there. Oh, that you yeah. Can't, if you move, your spleen will fall out. So they really duct taped the forehead. Remember when they had the, the forehead taped? Yes, yes. You couldn't get up. <laughs> I think that's traction with the pads and the tape. Oh, I'm May. pretty sure. May's laid up. She's got the leg up with the bandages on it. Nurses are coming in. She had a bedpan. She's on a gurney. I mean, she is ruined because she doesn't. She works a day job, you know, a desk job. So she's out all day just sitting there. Well, and, we haven't told them what happened. Oh, sorry. So it sticks to sound like we had an orgy. We got fucked in the ass. No, um, we, we played pickleball. Pickleball, folks. Fastest growing sport in the United States, world, America, whatever. It's COVID. It's taken over. <coughs> Old people love it and fat people avoid it. Well, it's very fun. And, you know, I, I love a pickleball. Sarah and I love pickleball. We don't get to play very often. And I like tennis, but tennis is tough. It's grueling. Work. It's grueling. And most people can't fucking play so they're just hitting it everywhere every which way sure and there's a lot of running and it's expensive and it's got to be you know it's whatever mm. but pickleball is a little bit more Con- tight and condensed it, yes it's a little more condensed so it's playable yeah condensed milk and it, and it it's indoors tennis can be outdoors a lot and it's uh it's it's what it's got. It's accessible. It's like very accessible. A kid can do it. An old guy can do it. We can do it. Mm-hmm. Ladies can do it. It's uh, it's for everybody. Yes. So I wanted to I wanted to play. We've been dying to play. So I called every couple I know. I really? went through everybody. Seven, eight, nine, almost twelve couples. And finally, I was like, "Well, it's over. No one wants to play with us. Everybody's busy." Well, and then I'm the last I, on the list. And then I thought, "What? You know what? I forgot about Mark and May." Ouchie, wouchie. We've only known each other for a coon's age. I mean, come on. Lucky thirteen. You were the thirteenth couple. Jesus Christ! What well, the fuck? You know, I had a couple of couples I met on the sidewalk. I uh, see a couple of hobos that yeah. attacked me. I tried to. <laughs> Men fences, a few swingers. I get it. No, I'm kidding. You were the first choice, let's hey! say. And uh, I, I couldn't believe you were into it. And Ooh. and Sarah and I were taking bets. She was like, "There's no way he's showing up." And uh, I was like, "I think he'll be there." See, I'm, I'm flipping on. I'm flipping the script on all you queefs. Yeah, well, you changed, and I had to scold you. But then I had to. I messaged May because I was like, "Can I just changes. ask you?" I was like, "Have you heard about pickleball at all?" And she's like, "Yes, yes. He told me I'm coming." And I'm like, "Okay, that's rare. Just she wanted to comes. make sure." Uh, but boy, was it exciting oh, and uh, lovely time! Lovely time, but my 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 hip flexors and my glutes are just ripped, I'm and my calves crying. were already fucked. Your calves were bad. Uh, your face is bad. I mean, it was a it was a bad scene going in, and I was stretching, but I didn't want you to see me stretching because I'm so I'm so out of shape. I'm so uh, stiff. Uh, and uh, I gotta say. I feel like we're comics. We always lean on the, hey, look at these civilians. What a bunch of rubes. Huh? We're living the good life. They got a day job. We're out every night doing shows. We're getting laid. We're getting drunk. You know, We're getting t-shirts made and zinging and zanging. Sure. And then you hit me with this, the most uh, couple-y, uh, mainstream-y kind of thing on the planet, and we're still down. I yes. think it's good for us to get into that world because it's easy to just step back and go, "Look at these idiots over here. Uh, we're 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 uh, we're uh, we're a pirates on the edge of the sea, you know." And then it's fun to go into that normal world for a minute. Well, it's quite fun and uh, it's delightful, and, and you get the um, dopamine flow. Yes, the serotonin, the serotonin, and, and the and the dopamines flowing, and, and you get into flow because you're not thinking about the reels and the views and the business because you're just trying to win yes. and get to the ball. And I'm sweating my tits off. And this is a funny thing too about the stretching. Because Sarah, and I'm st- I start stretching, and Sarah's like, "Are we the only ones that stretch for pickleball?" And I'm like, "No, we're the retards that only stretch for thirty seconds before pickleball. Ah. Like we should be stretching for an hour. We're in our fifties, for God's sakes, right?" And I this is something I learned too. I was like, "When I, I I get to play in that baseball team for a day, these guys are like twenty two years old. They spend like." A one full hour warming That's up true. and stretching. They have a guy pushing yes. them. And like Novak Djokovic famously is like stretching like 40% of his day. Is that right? Yes. And they have the long rubber bar. They're doing this thing. Oh, yeah. Right, on. right. And they're throwing a big heavy ball off yes. the wall. They have resistance bands. They're doing this. And they're doing it for an hour. These guys are 22 professional wow. athletes. And Sam, I just watched some behind the scenes Celtics practice, whatever. And it's just all day stretching. And here we come, 40 years old, 39, whatever, and going in there. And I'm like, oh, there are a couple of 
ah, limber, whatever. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, this is how you, you you throw your back out. No, I did one of these, a toe touch, and then I hit my wife, and I called it a macaroni. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, today I am sore. I, I shouldn't have been playing because my calves were all fucked up. You pushed through. You're a trooper. But, boy, was it fun. You feel alive out there. Oh, yeah, and it's nice because when that ball just sails over the net, like you hit a little dinger just to try to, to scoop me. A dinky. Yes, a d- dinky in the brain. And I got to get, get under it, and that's the most important thing in my life right now is getting under that ball, baby. Yes. And, and when you get it over, it feels good, but then you slam it behind me. Yeah, but either it was, way, it's a good time. Yeah, it was fun, and you had a couple of lane violations there. But whatever, ah, it was a good fun. I forgot and about that. What sucked is that we didn't get to, because I like to rotate partners sexually and pickleball sure. We didn't get to team up, and I would have really loved Love to have shown these women who's got the cocks. You hear that, Leah Thomas? Yeah, the wife swap is always a good time, and uh, you have to c- communicate with a, a new lady. It's fascinating. Yeah, it really is, and uh, it's really uh, exciting and fun. And I wish I could do it for the rest of my life. But you know, you really—it's really fun to get in there and paddle those balls. It's fun, and it's fun to cook because I've never played before. So you have to go. Oh, I'm bad at this. Let me work on that. Mm. Let me not do that again. And you have to. We only had an hour out there. I know. So it flew by. So you have to like checks and balances. You have to kind of be real with yourself. Like your backhand is weak. You got to hit it harder. And it's nice to apply new things. <laughs> yeah, it's very exciting. That, that clock, though, starts ticking. Ah. When you first start playing, you're like, this is great. We got 50 minutes. And then you're like counting down. And you feel like a kid. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, it's going to be over soon. Next time, I think we should do two hours. Definitely do two hours. Maybe we'll take a five minute breather because I was. Moister than a, a fat lady at a Bieber concert. Oh, I was wet. And I wore the headband as like kind of as a gag, and then I took it off. It was brown and wet, like my asshole. I'm getting one of those bands, baby. The band is big. Love the band, and uh, get the band back together. Hey, hey, folks. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. As humans, we're constantly learning new things about ourselves. Sometimes we don't want, we don't know what we want, or why we react the way we do until we talk through things. Therapy can help by deepening your self-awareness. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist and guide you on your journey of self-discovery. I love therapy. Big fan. You know me. Me and Joe go to the same fatty. Big Al. He's a good egg. Changed my life. Learn what's wrong with you. Try to fix it. Get to the root. You queefs. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. BetterHelp is entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Uh, Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time. No additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tuesdays. Get on it! Hey, folks, Tuesdays of Stories is brought to you by Manscaped. Spring cleaning is here, boys. Time to clean those nasty holes. Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 has it all. The Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer and Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer feature proprietary advanced skin-safe technology to protect your delicate parts and holes. Both are waterproof, so you can shave anywhere. The package also comes with their Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviser Ball Toner. This is good stuff. Smell as clean as a baby's ace. I don't know if that's a good reference for something clean. But all right. Always use the right tools for the job. Head to their website and check out their tools to help you upgrade your hygiene routine. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code TUESDAYS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use promo code TUESDAYS. Manscaped, your balls will thank you. And so will your partner. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesday's story is brought to you by Raycon. Yes, it's easy to give up on resolutions that are too big. Why not start with something small? Change up your routine with better sound with a pair of Raycon. Raycon is premium audio at a perfect price point, so you can build great habits without breaking the bank. Listen to our next episode at the gym with your Raycons, and you'll hear what we mean, no matter how you listen. <clears throat> We've got you covered. Raycon started half the price of the premium audio brand, so get one 
of each or a pair and a spare and still pay less than you would with some of the other guys. The offer, they offer buy now, pay later options. Every purchase has an easy and free return guarantee. Man, these guys are good. You got to get on this, folks. I love my Raycons and never leave home without them. With eight hours of playtime, crystal clear quality, and resistance to water and sweat, you can take these puppies anywhere. Take a call in the sauna or listen to your favorite album at the street fair. Ready to buy something small with a big impact? Go to buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash Tuesdays for 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. Thank you. Here's here's how good stretching is. One time, I don't know, we were 15, and one of our friends got into a fist fight with some guy, and he sucker punched him. It was a whole thing. So all their friends said, we're meeting at the park at 12 o'clock. We're going to you know have a rumble. And we were like, all right, all right. So it's like 20 of them and then 20 of us. Maybe like 11, we'll say. And I got there. And you know, you're kind of like, this isn't my fight, but these are my friends. We, we I don't know, you got to do something. But we got there, and I look over at the other team, and there's one guy was stretching. He was doing high kicks, and he was... He was like, uh, you know, doing this shit. And I was like, they're going to win. Right. We're fucked. This guy, he was wearing like uh, biking shorts with like uh, f- uh, basketball shorts over it. And I was like, oh, we're fucked. He's wearing like cycling gear. He's wearing like workout gear to beat our ass. That's interesting because some people might look at that as like weak. He's dressed like Billy Hoyle. You don't think yes. he's going to beat you up. He looked like, uh, what's the, the the ice skating gay guy? Brian Boitano? He looked like Brian Boitano, but I knew. I was like, oh, he's... A, he's wearing that, and he's not worried about it. Uh-huh. And B, he's stretching, and he's doing this shit before a fist fight. So I was like, oh, we're and they beat the shit out of us. Well, there's always those guys in a fight that's scary. They're, they're just doing like things matter-of-factly. They're like... Yes. They're, they're, they're like, oh, he's just. this is just like business as usual. <laughs> yes. I can't yes. see anything. That's so true. And uh, I, I've told this story uh, many a uh, time and probably on this podcast, but whatever. There's new listeners and a lot of people bail on us because sure. the, the kid jizz. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, YouTube especially. I think we cycled people through. <laughs> Menstrual cycle. But one time I was playing. I was at the Brown Jug. I think oh, you went there one time. Maybe mass. you were here for this. I think I've been to the Brown Jug. You might have been here for this story. Is that a chain? No, no chain. Because there's one in Cape Cod. No, this is a this is a this has got to be a one off. I think it's a common name, maybe. I see. Brown but this Jug. is a real shithole. I think it's in Melrose or Malden. It's not quite Everett, but maybe it's Everett. But whatever. Somebody was, was there. That the beef place. They it have beef sandwiches. You. No, that's Mike's roast beef. Ah, uh, Mike's. That we place is great. Yeah, bulletproof glass. Yeah. So, anyways, we're at the place, and it's me and Tom Dustin and somebody else. I forget who. But we're a cornhole, not cornhole, uh, we're that too, but uh, Golden Tea Golf. Oh. That was like a big thing. Tom would make make money doing that. That He'd was like big. hustle people. That had a moment. Big moment. I know a guy that ripped his hand open because the screw was loose on the corner where the ball is. Sta- he did this and just. Oh, yeah. What a weird injury. Yeah, it was kind of weird. But, uh. Um, just tell people, how'd you do that? Golf. We oh, walked. Right. <laughs> slice your hand open in golf. Hey, yeah. slice. Slice. Four. Uh, yeah. Score. Seven years ago. Three this is tough. Right. So we walk up to the. We'll edit out that and, um,. Whatever else, so we walk up to the guy. We're like, "Wait, hey, these guys were playing golden tea." A couple, a couple buddies, and one went out to smoke a cigarette. And we walk up to the other guy. We go, "Hey, can we, uh, can we get next? Mind if we jump in?" And the guy didn't quite understand or something. He's like, "What?" And we're like, "Well, we'll take, uh, well, now we'll take winner." Mm. And he was like, "Yeah, all right, hold on." And then he went outside and like chatted with his buddy. We we're kind of like, "This is weird." Mm. And then they came back in. They were like, all right, yeah, what do you want to do? You want to do it here? You want to go outside? Whoa. The fuck is it? What's going on? What? And we were like, what's that now? And they're like, yeah, you want to fucking fight? You got a fucking problem with us? And I was like, we were like, no, no, no. What? We're talking about golden tea. Yeah. We want to play golden. And they were like, oh, oh, shit, I'm sorry. I'm all <laughs> fucked up. I thought you wanted... 
But there was like four of us. I'm trying to think it was a visiting comic. Maybe it was Big Al, too. Mm. And I was like, I, I pulled Tom aside. I was like, all right, no talking shit with these guys. No. These guys are crazy. Yeah, they don't fuck around. Because it was one dude, and like four of us walked up and were like, hey, we're going to play. Yeah. And then they were like, hold on one second. And then he was just like, okay, yeah, we're ready. Wow. We're ready to fight. It was, it was so jarringly matter of fact that we yes. were like, what the fuck? Oh, don't fuck with that guy. Yeah, it was, it was scary. Then we ended up playing and it was fine and we all talked shit. Whatever. What the hell happened in his childhood or his dad beat him or something where a fight can just break out? It's almost like fucking, like going, hello, ma'am, uh, you can I get next? She's like, okay, hold on one second. <laughs> and then she fucks you. That would be super weird. Yes. And that's what these guys, he could just switch it on a dime yeah that's boston is very fighty there everything yeah. that's all that was valued was funny and fighting yes yeah, same new orleans was very similar and uh you'd go to a party and you're like ah oh, that guy's here there was a lot of that mm-hmm. like oh and you walk by him and you go what's up pussy and you're like hey what's up and he's like not gonna do anything huh and then he would push you and you're like all right i guess this I'm trying to get drunk and maybe finger a, a nine-year-old here. What are we doing? Yeah, that was a thing. I, I, I said this with Donnelly. I've told you this story, too. I went up to drank with Donnelly years ago, obviously, and uh, he was at a bar in Boston. We were in, like, South Boston, and he was like, what's up, guy? How you doing, kid? Look at this fucking kid. Look, yeah. at, ah, look at your hair, you fucking wacky. You look like Ronald McDonald. And I remember being like, you're going to get us killed. Like, this uh. guy's going to beat the shit out of you. And he's like, I'm having a good time. What are you talking? And I was like, no, we're in, like, South Boston here. These guys are going to beat the fuck out of us. Right. And I could see these guys, like, just eyeing us. And I'm like, I'm telling you. And he's like, I'm telling you. It's fine. And yeah. I'm like, you're out of your mind. I'm like, I'm from here. Right. They hate you. They want to beat us up just because you're not... From South Boston. Right, right. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we ended up getting out of there unscathed, but... Well, we had one guy, one of our friends, he was Honduran, and he was like a wild... He's a Marine now, but he was kind of a wild child, and the ladies loved him, and uh, he had this problem with this guy, Justin, and he walked up with his girlfriend, my buddy, and the other guy was like... (laughs) Damn, checking her out. And he goes, don't look at my girlfriend like that. And they just fist fought right there, like right in front of everybody, in front of the girlfriend, everything. And I was just like, this sucks. Yeah. You know, like, it it was cool to watch, but he got his ass kicked bad. And then you're like, what are we doing? Now we got to take him home or maybe to the hospital. It was a bummer. Yeah, it's no good. By the way, that's a fat girlfriend he had. You really went out there with the arm. (laughs) That that was like a a wide dame. Yeah, she was huge. (laughs) But uh, you had to look at her, you know? Jesus, every Uh, time that door slams. I know, it's brutal. You can't can't close it. He has to slam it every time. I think it's a message. It's a message. It's a Sicilian message. Like a horse head. We sleep with the fishes. The Uh, Fishes. Ah, John Fish. Luca Brasi. He's funny. Oh, good comic. That's a heck of a comic. I, as you can see, we don't have any uh, stories. I had another thing about fist fighting. Mm. Oh, I lost <laughs> it. Yeah, I can remember every guy, too. Sometimes I see him on Instagram, and they have kids now. And I was like, Jesus, this guy was, like, so scary and so hot. Oh, I remember. I was at a party. You know those guys who can just turn on a dime? They just You say the wrong thing, and it's like... World War Three, game on, let's do this. Yes. So this one guy I kind of knew, and I go, hey, what's up, man? He goes, hey, who's got the weed around here? Who's got the weed? We're at a f- house party. There's a swimming pool, you know, backyard. And I'm like, ah, oh, this guy's a pothead. And he goes, don't fucking call me a pothead. I was like, Ooh. nah, I'm just joking. And he's like, no, no. And he's like, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm like, come on, man. I just got here. Like, what are we doing here? But I had to, like, talk him off a ledge for a half an hour. And that that turned out to be my whole party. And then eventually, you know, house party, some asshole threw the grandfather clock in the pool. And the the little nerd kid who's running the house, he's like, no. And they're throwing the the lawn chairs in and the the dishes. And it got pretty ugly. Now, how often were you getting beat up? Because when I first met you, there was a million times where I thought you were going to get beat up. Remember we had that party on the house? On the roof, somebody had a party. I think it was like a, a comic booker, or maybe it was that other lady that would always be around. But you came down. I, let me try to remember this, because you got saved by a few people coming in. Yeah, it was there a was little a guy because you were like, "What's up, you cunt?" And you called the woman a cunt, and then her boyfriend <laughs> appeared. And luckily, there was like four of us because the guy was like, "What is it?" Like he just heard something. You called some woman a cunt, like playfully. Yeah, I'm joking. And uh, the guy was like, "What is this?" And I think he had, he had just shown up or something. I can't remember because I was banged up. That's but we quite were a leaving. greeting. 
Yeah. You called her a cunt, and uh, uh, I, I have mean, no what, recollection of this. Yeah, we, it was a rooftop party. I'm trying to remember. A lot of roofs back in the day because it was free. A roof was free. Yes. <laughs> so you'd get a case of shit beer, Paps or whatever, Milwaukee's best, and you just sit on that roof, and we would just get banged up till someone fell off the roof, then we go home. Yeah, I remember being at the Boston Comedy Festival party a couple times. I've been this guy. I got two stories about being the voice of reason. Which, by the way, when I was drinking, if I was the voice of reason, you got some real fuck ups running around. Good point. But there was one, there's a Boston Comedy Festival party. I think it was Victor Vernado. Oh, yeah. Funny <clears throat> guy. His hotel, we, we could hang on the roof of his hotel, and everybody was hanging out. And Dan Bulger, I forget what happened. His shoes got tied together somehow. Oh, that's funny. Or I that's... think his pants ripped. Ah, that happened. And so they were ripped, and he was running, and he everyone was laughing, like, oh, look at Bulger run around with his pants off. And he tripped and fell, because that's what happens when you run with your pants at your ankles sure. and you're drunk. I've seen cartoons. And he smashed his face on the roof. Ah. And then he gets up, and everybody comes running over, and he's like, oh, my God, should I go to the hospital? And everyone goes, you're fine. I think you're good. You're good. And it's because no one wants the party to end. That's all it is. So I walked over, and there's blood like squirting out of his chin, uh, like a fucking Sam Raimi movie or whatever. Sure, it's sure. It's just firing out of his uh, chin. It's like all my glasses and stuff. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. oh no. And I was like, you got to go to the hospital. And everyone's like calling me a fucking douche. They're like, uh, you're a square, you fucking paranoid piece of shit. And I'm like, God, I I'm drunk. I'm on drugs. I don't want to go to a hospital. Yeah. But. His fa his chin is open. I can see the bone of his chin. Oh, uh, which I'd, I'd kill for that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I go fuck everybody. I'll take him. You guys stay. So we went to the we took a cab. I think to the emergency room. And as soon as they see him, they're like, "Yeah, you need stitches." Whoa, your face is open. And he ended up getting like eight stitches. And I remember he gave the the Sufi. This is like in Day oh, Cook, yeah, and we had a, yeah. a photo of him getting the stitches. The guy was literally sewing him, and he's doing the super finger. It just gets stitches. I love it. Uh, which is pretty pretty fun. And then the part of the party came to us, and I remember Shane Moss came. Oh, you remember he Shane? Was, boy, he could put him back. He was. This is in his. I don't think he drinks anymore, but he was drinking and and whatever else. And uh, it was the classic thing. It was like Goodfellas. When the doctor came in, he thought he was seeing Shane. Uh, he walks up. He's like, okay, <laughs> what the fuck did you do? And Shane's like, no, no, I'm 100% uh, this guy over that's here. Great. And uh, that, was, that was one. And then the other story I like to tell, we used to play softball in, in South Boston, a big comedy league. And we had the little plastic bases. Yeah. Like they were just like a, a piece of plastic. That you put down. They weren't in the ground. Oh, uh, they can move too much. Exactly. And I was over out in uh, left field, and uh, which which sounds bad, but in softball, that's the prime position. Is that where the balls go? Everyone's bombing them out to left. Solid. And so I'm out in left, and I watch Alvin David, Big L. Oh, he can swing. He can swing, and he can he can do it all. Was He's he, a Rhode Island guy. Was he a player? A baseball player? Yeah. I don't he think so. He looks squatty like a catcher. No, I don't think so. All right. But, uh, boy, I got so many great Alvin stories. Has he oh. ever been on the podcast back in the day? Well, I think once, and nobody could understand him. Oh, we had a live pod yeah. with him and Bulger. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's tough to understand sometimes when he gets going. Yeah. He talks very fast. And uh, But anyway, so he runs into the base, and he tries to stop and just slides and lands on his face. Oh. And just goes, boom. And once again... I hate to tell these stories where I'm the hero, but everyone yeah. converges. Yes. He stands up. And everyone goes, I think you're okay. He's like, I'm fine, I'm fine. And everyone's like, yeah, I think you're okay. And blood starts coming out of his nose. Uh huh. And I go, uh, Alvin, we got to go to the hospital, buddy. I'm sorry. I hate to break up the game, but we, you got to go to the hospital. What are you, Dr. Quinn, Dr. List Medicine Woman? And everyone goes, what? No, no, it's a nosebleed. He's like, yeah, it's just a nosebleed. And I went, Al, you didn't hit your nose. Hmm. If someone punches you in the nose or the ball hits your nose and you get a nosebleed, you're sure. like, oh, geez, that's probably fine. But Joe I'm like, if best. you hit the side of your face and blood comes out of your nose. That's a concussion. That's an issue. The CTE. Your fucking face caved in. Yes. Like there's blood in your face and it's moved out of your nose. Yeah. Well, what a trooper to be able to just, I'll keep going. I'm all right. Well, he had about 350 beers. Ah, that'll help. And by the way, it was the night the Celtics won the uh, championships. Must have been 08, I guess. That'll and be. Uh, we said, I'm sorry. We got to go to the emergency room. We went down there. And once again, they go and they're like, yeah, your, your fucking facial plate is caved in. The cheekbone was like shattered. Holy hell. He went like cheek first into the ground. Did he score? No, he was standing ah. at second. Well, someone must have been an automatic runner. I left with him. Damn. 
But it was that thing where you, yeah, you see blood, you get smacked over here, and blood trickles out of here. You're like, that doesn't seem great. Holy hell, that that poor guy. But he's all right. Yeah, this was 20 years ago. I mean, yeah. In all fairness, when you talk to Al, you're like, something's up. Yeah, well, he's a, he's a, he's a wild one and a great disposition, that guy. Great he's having guy. a good... I've said it for years. Positive. That guy's having a nice time. <laughs> yeah, he's a good egg. He's he's a fun guy to talk to. And uh, you know it'd be funny if he hit his head and he's just like, hello, how are you? <laughs> like if he became... Because he's, he's a wackadoo, you know? He's yeah. kind of all over the place. That'd be funny if it, it knocked him... Like I always say when Joe Mackey gets laid, he's going to be like... What's up, dog? You know, he's going to totally change his whole demeanor. Well, Big Al is a classic character. He's got another thing that makes me laugh so hard is uh, Bulger. You know, they're about 20 years apart in yeah, age. Yeah, Al's old. Literally. And uh, Bulger was like, yeah, Bon Jovi, uh, I, I just don't get it. I think he sucks. <laughs> and, and Alvin, who's like Italian from the 80s, yeah. gets really serious. I've never seen him serious about anything. Sure. And he goes, brother, you weren't there. Oh, that's perfect. That's so perfect. That's perfect. So much reverence, so that's serious, lunch. and it's just like, stop it. <laughs> you don't understand. And it's Bon Jovi, and all I can think about is like 1985, Alvin's like a junior in high school, he's got the headband yeah, and the big yeah, hair, the and he's, feathered hair. he's just loading the hairspray and into listening to like, she's a little runaway, yeah, and he's like, yeah. you don't get it. Ooh, I saw something like that, Veter, what, this is open mic years, this must be like 08, 09, we're at comics, no longer there, Paul Newman just died. Ah, uh, Newman. So Veter, it's a big deal. He was a huge star, whatever. And Veter's up there zigging Newman because he's trying to be edgy. He's trying to be a comic. He's like, I never got it. He sucks. Oh, Fig Newtons, get out of here. What do you think you are? And this guy, this old guy, bartending, goes, <laughs> lifts that flap up, and he goes, nope, nope. And he stops Veter, and he, he's like heckling him. He's like, you don't talk about Newman like that. This guy was 60 years old, you know? So he probably knew the guy or raced with him or something. But uh, Veter got shut down, and he's four foot one. He was like, yes, sir, no, sir. Well, I'm I'm with this guy. You know, The older I get, the more I'm like, you don't joke about this kind of stuff. Paul Newman, I mean, he's probably the greatest movie star of all time. He carried Redford's ass, that's for sure. Mm. And then he donated all the money and the racing and the salad. And, and his the, son killed himself. Uh, cool Hand Luke, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it got pretty ugly. Ah, jeez. I know. Everybody's like, you're Paul Newman's son, and da-da-da. You got, you got your life by the balls or whatever. Your dad's a race car driver, hottest guy on the planet. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's why I'm doing it. No, It was too much. Wow. Well, poor guy. I'll pour one out for Paul Newman's son. Uh, Randy. Randy Newman? No, I don't know. He's a hell of a hell of a writer, hell Damn, of a singer. I had something with the concussion. You said the nosebleed, and it got me, and now I lost it. Fuck. Mm. God, don't you hate losing it? Yeah, COVID that's all. fog. COVID fog, yeah. People got that. Maybe it'll come back, but it was a... We were really on a roll with fun fun uh, getting hurt stories. Concussions. And I, God damn it, I lost it. Bleeding. Booze really got you through a lot of in injuries, because we were always so drunk that you didn't even feel anything. Yeah, that's what was. That's what's hard about it is people go, no, no, I'm fine. I can keep going. You need that other person to be like, I think this is a problem. Totally, totally. You, you, thank God you're there. Yeah, you're like, yeah, I think the I think your face is caved in. <laughs> but I remember going back afterwards and watching the the Celtics and like his ice in his face. There was something fun about like getting out of the hospital. You like you, you of course my face wasn't broken. But yeah. that feeling of like getting out and being like, "Okay, we're free again." That is nice. I remember uh, I got knocked out at a fight in Mardi Gras. I was probably in college. Guy knocked me out, whatever. And I woke up and I had the big old purple egg mm -hmm. on the on the eye. I couldn't open the eye, and I fell asleep at my girlfriend's apartment on the floor. Woke up and I look in the mirror and it was like, oh, mm. just that 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 Quasimodo purple blood everywhere. You know, the, the other eye's black. This is black, and you're like, God damn! My mom calls. I had a little Nokia brick, and she goes, "We still getting lunch?" Uh. And I couldn't face her with that mug. Yeah, I looked too bad, and I said, "I can't, mom." And she was like. What's going on with you? Like, she could tell. She was like, you're off. Something's off. And I'm like, no, no, I'm good. But I, I had to hide for like three days. I couldn't go out. That's a nice mom, at least. She sounds... Well, she was pissed because I'm blowing her off. She's like, I'm on my way to the restaurant. I'll see you there in 20. And I was like, I can't do it, mom. And she was like, well, we've been talking about this for two days. And I was like, I just can't do it. She's like, why? And I'm like, I can't. She's like, why won't you tell me why? It's like, she could... She could Feel it out. Wow. And that's the last time you ever did that to anybody. Yeah. And uh, last time I saw my mom. <laughs> um, oh, wait. I just had one. I lost it. Ah, now. we're losing it. 
Fuck. Damn it, I had oh, a good one. it reminded me of I got hit in the eye one time. Twice. I've taken two to the eye. I think that's why I'm blind and gay. Baseball? Yeah, well, one was baseball, so I was the, uh, the pitcher. And uh, I threw a wild pitch. Let's call it a pass ball, just for whatever. Pass ball. Catcher's fault. I was runner on third, so I came running in to cover home. And then the guy slid across the plate before my stupid catcher could get it. It was lost in the fence or whatever. You know, those fences were always kicked in, so the ball would jam under there. So he's trying to get it. The guy slides, and I went, ah, fuck, because we gave up the run. (laughs) But the catcher that... Finally gets the ball and just turns and whips it because he knows there's a play at the plate. So I he just see. turns and whips it. Uh-huh. But I had just assumed he's not going to gun the ball because this guy's already in his car. He's on the way home. Sure. So wait, you're by third base. I'm at home plate. Oh, you're at home plate. Okay. Yes. I run from the mound to home plate to cover. I watch him slide across. And I go, I well, there's see. no play now. And I look up and <laughs> right in the eyeball. Woo! And this is a full fastball from about six feet. And it, you know, fucking caved my face in the whole thing. Oh, and that's a hard ball. This ain't no soft. This is baseball, and uh, the, the th- you have to go with the eye test and the pat. I had to have an eye patch. And wow. then when it came off, I remember the white of my eye was like yeah, like yes. a dark yellow. Yes, like uh, what's that disease with the drinking? Jaundice. Thank you. Good call, jaundice. Way to pull that out. Yeah, well, I just hung out with Dustin. Uh, (laughs) I was Googling it. There was an old black guy on my quarter who would always have like a Cobra, one of those big silver beers, you know, and uh, he had crazy jaundice. He was like, hey, what's up, buddy? All right. I was like, whoa, yellow eyes. Ah, jeez. Like a a doll's eyes. (laughs) Um, And they roll over white. Yeah, Um, yeah. Those ball hitting to the face. I've had a few balls in my uh, face. (laughs) It is a bit. That thing is hard. Yeah, right on the chin. And I had another one where everyone was playing pickle. That was the big game, which I think they later call it monkeys in the middle or run around. You got the guys on both sides. That was the number one activity in my neighborhood. We played pickle all the time. I mean, that was it. But that was just the game. It wasn't like a baseball game that would a pickle would happen. Sure. You just set up the bases and let's go. Well, that's interesting. We would play for hours. And I had just got back from baseball practice or a game. And everyone was playing in the front yard. So I went, oh, I'm playing. And then whoever was supposed to catch it, I think it was my cousin, he turned and it just he just didn't catch it. Because mm. it was the ball was coming and he was like, oh, you're playing? And then oh. just, and same thing, just right in the old eyeball. Yeah. And uh, you, yeah, you same don't want, thing, hospital. You don't want that temple too because that'll <laughs> turn the lights out. There's a couple, if you give it a goog, there's a couple uh, MLB players who <laughs> took oh, one yeah. of the temple. They went blind. <laughs> Bryce Flurry was a Red Sox pitcher that took one of the face, and it was bad. Like Flurry. Tony Cligniaro, way wow. back in the day. calligraphy. Yeah, fucked him up real good. So I remember one time uh, I had a soccer ball I loved. You know when you were a kid, you had like eight things, and you loved every one of them? Yeah, sure. All not right. a soccer ball. I'm not a fucking queer. <laughs> well, I took what I could get, and I decided it was all beat up and had my name on it. I lo- I, it was like Wilson. I loved this uh, thing. Yes. We had a connection, me and the soccer ball. Something about it. Also, I grew up in a, in, in, a, in New Orleans, so there was a lot of French influence. So, like a lot sure. of the kids uh, I grew up with were like soccer douches. Mm. They loved it. Umbro and Lotto. Remember those Lotto sneakers, oh, yeah. the black ones? A lot of that shit. I play the Lotto. Yeah. <laughs> so I was I had the soccer ball at school. I'm like, I'm gonna bring it today. I'm bringing this my one of my favorite things to school. Big deal. Okay. So I got that puppy right here, and I remember holding it, and the bell rang. And you know you you know they had the like early recess before school started where the kids would just yeah, run around. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. So we were in that, and I was holding it, and I'm talking to my chums, having a good time, curly headed idiot, you know, dumb fat kid. And this kid goes, boop, pops it out, kicks it over to his friend. He kicks it to another guy twenty feet away, and they go, got it. And I go, all right, you rascals, you know, let's uh, let's make with the fun time over. Here we go. And they go, no, we're keeping this. Yeah, these are some street toughs. And I go, that's all fun and good, but uh, class time, you know. And they go, no, no, that's it. And I just was crushed, you know, when something just gets taken away from you. And there's no, I I chased him around a little bit, but he was they 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 were doing the. Uh, Keep away. Yeah, they had numbers. They had numbers. They were a little older, a little tougher, a little darker. And uh, you just had to accept it. And the teacher's like, come on, let's go. And I just had to go into class, and I had a tear roll down. Oh, like, like an Indian geez. with the trash. Oh, boy. And I was like, God. And I was like, damn, that's just gone. Like, did, I just got to accept that. Did you think about squealing and saying, hey, listen, I brought my soccer ball, and these street toughs robbed me? Not really. I think I did like a, but Mrs. 
whatever, my soccer ball. And she was like, shut up. No one likes you. You're half retarded. Getting in, getting the arithmetic. And I said, all right. And I was just like, ah. Cut to the end of the day. Me and my brother have to meet up to go get picked up. And uh, he hands me the soccer ball. And he goes, oh. I got it back. And I go, oh, it was the best thing anyone's ever done for wow. me. He is a magician. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> he got the ball back. Now, were they upperclassmen? And he was an upperclassman, so he said, hey. I think so, yeah. And I think maybe he he stole it, but he must have hurt. I never was like, hey, buddy, hey, brother, my my, my ball got taken. It's just, you know, school, it's like a little uh, organism. He found out somehow, and he goes, I'm getting that ball back for my brother. Wow. Big moment. Never talked to him That's again. That's beautiful. Yeah, I would have tried to talk to him if I knew that story. Oh, yeah. It was real big brother shit where I'm like, now we're talking. Thank you. Did he make it appear like a card? <laughs> no, no. He just I think he did one of these. And wow. I was like, so I got the ball back. That's sweet. Where's that ball now? Isn't that fascinating? I think someone else stole it. All your possessions are just gone. It's Isn't that a weird thing about life? On the shore of a beach in Myanmar or something, you know? Like, it just floats away. Formerly Burma. There you go. Yeah. Yes. Or is it Burma now? Which which way did it? No, I think it's. I think it was Burma. Ah, uh-huh. Burmese. Oh, Python. Is yeah. That right? Oh yeah, big big Python, Burmese Python. But so is it now a Myanmar Python? Oh, now that's a question. Yeah. Interesting. They had a big Holocaust over there too from Facebook. Huh? I think Facebook caused a big, not a Holocaust, a uh, genocide. Genocide recently. Yes. All Formerly right. Burma. Formerly Burma. Formerly Burma, 1989. So can we go to Myanmar Python now instead of Burmese? I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't think we want to go to Myanmar, though. It sounds no. like they're rounding people up and killing them. Yeah, yeah, Myanmar, Norman. Now, what is Pickleball's origin? I've been sitting on this. What Do you know the origin? I don't. I don't know the origin. It's been around a long time, though, longer than you think. Maybe we should take a guess. Yeah, take a guess. I'm going to say 60s. Okay. No, I'm talking about the the origin of the of the name pickle. Oh, I think I read this and it didn't retain. I don't retain things anymore. Ah, uh, retainer. But I, I'm I'm interested now to throw out a, a guess for when this thing started. Also, okay. But pickle yeah, guess, ball. Guess both. Guess guess the year or whatever, and then guess the origin. Pick, name. Pickle ball. You got to back it up a few years because it always takes a couple to get going. Right. So I'm going to go 57, 58, something like that. Okay. This is like a price is right. Yeah. You did the $1 bet. Sure. And the pickle, I don't know what the pickle. Uh, but yeah, we did. It's funny because we, we had a game called Pickle. Yeah. We played with a ball. Right, right, right. So I don't know the name. I have no idea. How would I know that? So what's your what's your year guess? 1960. Okay. And your guess is 57? I mean, I'm, Chuck just looks so disappointed at me. I'm going to say, though, for the origin of the name, I'll just say... Uh, they used paddles they would stir pickles with or something like that. Oh, that's a good guess. Oh, really? Yeah, I got to keep a poker face. I don't want to I'm going to say a guy's name is Ted Pickle. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's a good one. All right. All right. <laughs> it's not as good as his, obviously. I can see the face. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying either of you guys are right. Summer of 1965. Ah, oh, you got it. Pickleball was founded by Joel Pritchard, mm. Bill Bell, and Barney McCallum on Brainbridge Island, Washington. Within days, Joan Pritchard had come up with the name Pickleball, a reference to the thrown-together, leftover non-starters in the pickle boat of crew races. Whoa, 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 whoa. I guess that means that like, the pickle boat is like not the A-team of whatever they're doing. Oh. Right? You know what I mean? Non-starters? Oh, yes. Non-starters, I think, is like bench warmers, essentially. Of a pickle boat. I what think that's like a pickle, pickle boat. boat. I think it might be like an old phrase. I know about a pickle park. It might be like an old phrase. Did you guys have that term, pickle park? No, we had pickle, pickle jar. Park. Pickle park was like where uh, the gays went and blew each other. Oh, time. that's so pretty like, good. Yeah, that's a pickle park. <laughs> like well, that. We called it Homo Highway. You never Highway. heard that? No, I love it. I, my friend's mother said that, and I, it makes me think, I'm like, <laughs> is that park. just her thing? Because we were going hiking in Blue Hills, and she's like, stay away from Blue Hills. It's a pickle park. Oh, I love that. And we were That's like, hilarious. what is that? And she's like, it's where the men go to have sex. So Hell's Kitchen is a pickle park. Yes. Oh, uh, great. Chelsea park. is a pickle park. Yeah, my, my basement's a pickle park. <laughs> <laughs> I love pickle park. When my wife's Provin- out of town. Provincetown. Yeah, pickle park. Give a pickle park a Google and see if that we can find that. Well, I just looked up pickle boat, which is the reference. It says, in sailing, the pickle boat is the last boat to finish a race. Oh. So it's like a, it's like a general It's term. a derogatory term. Yeah, you're the loser. Yeah, okay. You're the loser. So Which makes sense. Pickleball is for people who are last picked. Oh, okay. Hey. And you've never played? <laughs> Shelby's uh he's he's a tennis player. <laughs> 
All right, look up Pickle Park. Is this a term? <laughs> this is probably, by the way, derogatory. I'm probably saying a horrible slur right now. Well, we had Homo Highway, so that's a lot cleaner. <laughs> Pickle Park, Norman. Uh, it's funny because it's on it's it's on Wikipedia as just a rest area. Mm. It says. Oh. Well, that's the uh, same thing. No, it's got to say. That's, it's, well, it that's says, a gay it li- hangout. It literally says now in rest area, a place usually in the limited access highway where one can stop to use the restroom or take a break from traveling. Well, yeah, that's, that's I guess a, that's one way to say it. That's gay know, area. Yeah. That's funny to be like, hey, you want to take a break from traveling? Yeah. Suck each other off. All right, here we go. I got the origin of Pickle Park. Yeah, uh, Pickle Park. Put in Pickle Park, gay, hang, Blue Hills, <laughs> Carol <Yes>. Stevenson. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, it is. It is. It is the gay thing. Okay, yeah, right. it's right. in the seventies. I love that. There you go. She's from the seventies. There you go, Pickle Park. I, I want to go visit. And they would call people that go there pickle suckers or pickle park rangers. Which Ooh, is pickle well, the, park the second rangers. one's a lot nicer. Pickle yeah. suckers sounds like <laughs> I, I suck a pickle. Yeah, I guess I like so. the juice. So yeah. they used to be called lollipop parks for the same reason. No kidding. Uh, pickle you park suck. better. Yeah. Ba-doom, boom, boom. And rest areas are, you know, notoriously gay hangouts back yeah. in the day because they couldn't, they didn't have places to go. Right. These poor gays had to fuck each other at a rest area. Wow. Tough times. Yeah. We really came around on this issue, though. Law of the land. I know it does some pushback in certain places or whatever, but uh, that's all in our lifetime. Yeah, gay marriage. I remember even Clinton and Obama were like, ah, it's probably a bad idea, and then here we are. Well, I get annoyed because some people are like, I read somebody recently being like, Obama, never forget that Obama was openly against gay marriage. And I get so annoyed because I'm like, do you have, and I don't want to talk about politics too much on the show, but you're like, well, do you have any understanding of politics? He did what he had to do to win. Yeah. And then I'm like, they're like, fuck him. I'll never forgive him for that. But you're like, but do you remember also... When it became the law of the land yeah. under him, yeah, yeah, like I don't understand. Like, so you have no understanding of any workings of that. Well, you're looking at it rationally. They just want the outrage. They want the argument. They want this win on the guy. They don't want. They don't care about justice. They don't even care about gays or pickle park. They care about this. This mo- like I gotcha. Right. That's all they want, and that's why it sucks. Because you're like, we're not getting anywhere. You're not listening. Right. Yeah, you're like, even if he was, obviously he wasn't against gay marriage, but even if he was, and then changed his mind and got a pass, yeah, you're like, that's pretty good. That's uh, now, now we're getting da- down to the weeds. Let's but, get the hell out of this area. They do that with slavery. They go, oh, white people cause slavery. And you're like, yeah, but they also abolished it. Oh, you know, boy. So you got that whole rigmarole. <laughs> and uh, these aren't, uh, <laughs> don't clip that. These are my, I'm just saying what I read on, you know, my fan page. Oh, anyways, yeah, back to the right. injuries. Who else is injured? I, uh, uh, what time I was guy? getting a haircut and they yeah. my, uh, What are you, like a gherkin or a dill? Yeah. I like a sweet. <laughs> bread and butter's good, too. Bread and butter. I love bread and butter. Pickles? Oh, no. I hate pickles. What? Pickles are disgusting. I me. love a pick. <laughs> no, no. You like them? Yeah, you yeah. can pickle a dick. I'll eat Ooh. it. Oh, yeah. No, pickle's bad. Uh, but that's, I'm nice to hang out with at a diner because you're always getting my pickle. I'll tickle your pickle. And coleslaw. I'm like, you got extra coleslaw, extra pickle. That diner coleslaw, they really got to step that up a notch. It's in that dumb little ketchup holder, mm. you know, and it's just yes. gooey and white and creamy. Ugh. Yeah. It's like Pickle Park. Sounds like something you find in Blue Hills. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, Annie Jizz. Nobody eats that coleslaw. I know. Nobody. I've seen people eat it. I tried to give that to a hobo once, and he spit in my ass. <laughs> um, I feel like I've seen you eat the coleslaw. I've eaten it. I'm I've not never seen you it. not eat a thing that was on the table. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a problem. What what time is it, by the way? I feel like we've been here 54. for three oh, hours. Okay, okay. okay. I was like wondering. I didn't see you. Did you give us the thing? Mm, I was preoccupied. Oh, what's going on over there? He's looking uh, at pictures of Pickle Park. Pickle Park, yeah. Yeah, all right. Pickle Park's a good name for a diner. Yeah, that's, that's true. A Jewish deli, Pickle yeah, Park. Yeah. Well, you know my best name thing? They have the mangroves in Key West, a gay bar called the Mangrove. That's like the, the trees that sprinkle out of the ground. Up the I know them, yeah. The mangrove. Mangrove's good. That's, that's funny because I went to Puerto Rico, and I was like, oh, we went and saw the Mangroves, and you said that'd be a great gay name. What do you mean? You said that'd be a great gay bar name, Mangrove. Oh, did I already say this? No, but now you're saying you saw a real gay bar. No, I'm saying oh, that would be. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. I thought you found Mangrove. No, no. I want to found I want to found it by me. <laughs> ah, I see. We should invest in a gay bar. Sure, Pickle Park. You like that more than Mangrove? 
Well, if it's in Key West, it's mangrove. All right, if it's all here, right. We'll call it pickle park. But I think pickle park is derogatory. I see. Or at least it was. But maybe we embrace it like the N word. Yes, make it our own. We got a ton of gym name uh, suggestions. Oh yeah, yeah I've like, gotten a ton, a few. like a hundred. Maybe we'll least. go through those on the Patreon. Yeah, yeah, we should. I like it. Hey, what about when we do a good job? We can be a jerk attack. Hey, yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> All right, jerk attack. Like we win in pickleball and we're on the same team. That's a jerk attack. And and jizz and coming my ass, all that. That's that's jarkin. Instead of jargon, jarkin. Ooh, I like it. This, I could like be, it. Uh, this could be something. Pickle jarkin. Uh, where are you going to be? Uh, oh, are we already there? Uh, uh, what is it? March 14th. Uh, well, Salt Lake City. This is a big one. There, there, yeah, you got to come to this show. That's March 31st and April 1st. April Fool's. Salt Lake City. And then uh, the Wilbur Theater, which are going fast. I got the, the numbers. These tickets are dwindling, so get on it. Don't wait for that one. That will sell out. Maybe we can add a puppy. I don't know about adding. All right, all right. You're more of a subtractor. Maybe we'll add, but right. I feel like that second one would have 150 people. In. Right. Well, that Wilbur, I mean, they just, is there that many people in Beantown? It's like, I'm there doing 18 shows. Sam's doing 51. Stavros is doing 98. Then Bill Spur shows up. Then Rogan. <laughs> then you. And it's like, they keep filling in. Boy, the timing of this, not great. Huh? I'm like, well, I might sell out. You never know. You're like, well, Sam's doing 81. I'm like, Jesus. Oh, sorry. I've Put just... some space between my struggling to sell one and Sam's 89. Well, I'm just saying that it's a, it's a funny factory over there. They just keep pumping through people. They show up. Well, I got to get new friends. But uh, uh, Wilbur geez. Theater, please, for the love of God. <laughs> Nobody's bought a ticket. I haven't had the heart to tell anybody. <laughs> um, we're subtracting a show. Wilbur Theater, and then uh, Tempe Improv. That's oh, a hot room. Is that what we did room. together? Yes, yes. yes Those were fun. dark days. No, that was right after I got married. It was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Well, I thought that was a bad thing. We smoked, and uh, we had... Chesley. Chesley was on. Yeah, that was We went fun. hiking with that other guy. Oh, yeah. We swam in his pool. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Great guy. That was fun. So Tempe Improv, then Tampa Side Splitters. We've had some good times there, huh? Oh, one of the great clubs. Good time. The bachelor party. That's what I was going to say. Yes. I got it back. It's not great. But you were talking about being the guy who takes people to the hospital. Uh-huh. We were at the bachelor party, Tampa, Florida, drinking all day, sunshine all day. Boy, we had a good time. Mm -hmm. IVs, comedy shows, strippers, you name it. But at one point, you had gone out and gotten a tea or whatever the fuck you do. <laughs> and... <laughs> I was, you know, partying with the boys. We're grilling, we're drinking, and I go, I'm jumping off the second floor into the pool. Yes. And I got up there, and, you know, I'm 39. And I used to do backflips off the roof and all this shit, Boitano yeah. style. And I'm 39, I'm, I'm getting married, I'm gay, and I, I'm on the edge of the railing. And when you're on the other side of a railing and your little twinky toes are hanging onto that wood, oh, that you bad. know. And uh, everybody's like, jump, or ah, I wouldn't do it. Ah, go for it. Come on, live your life. And I'm looking down at the pool from the second floor, and you show up kind of going, hey, what's up, guy? What are you guys doing? Uh, and right when I saw you do that, I was like, all right, I'm out. No, it was a whole thing. It's 80 people all telling you to jump. Just bad friends. Again, it's the same. Yeah, I, good I mean, podcast. I'm not here to just virtue signal, but I'm the best friend anyone's ever had. Well, it was a, it was almost fatherly. Like You weren't like, don't do it. You were like, eh, it's, uh, what, what good will come I of go, this? Calm down. What are you doing? Yeah, it was very matter of fact. Well, it is a, it's a risk reward. You right. get a photo of you Indian style. Crisscross applesauce, whatever the fuck, in the air, and everyone's behind you going like this. Great photo. Good photo. That's the best case scenario. Right. You get 800 likes on a photo, and then everyone goes, oh my God, you're the craziest. Worse, you, you fucking snap your ankle, you break your leg, you yeah, die, yeah. you mangle your face. And, uh, you know, all this other stuff, just for a quick, woo! Yeah. Salacuse was mad at me. He wanted to win a Pulitzer for that horse shit. Sure, sure, But yeah. we got other photos. Reeling in the fish, oh, Umar throwing up. Great picks, great picks. We climbed a palm tree, we went out in the ocean. That ocean pick is killer. Great ocean pick. And what about Doug with the Russian ladies? Oh! Or Ukrainian, excuse me. Oh, boy. That's Putin. a bad confusing. Yeah, yeah, we had a great time. By the way, I'm going to have 48 emails being like, you fucking cunt. We want to see Mark jump off a boat, you <laughs> fucking piece of shit. I, I, I'm saving your life. I'll do it again. Don't worry. Yeah. Not, if you if you hadn't showed up, I would have done it. Yeah, it would have been bad. And yeah. there was like also there was like little couch cushions around. Like that's gonna help. 
<laughs> Literally, right, there's couch cushions right. around the rim of the pool. I'm that's like, what are you kidding? Such ten year old boy thinking. Like, oh, this was one time I jumped off a, a balcony and I had a plastic bag and I, I thought I was gonna marry Poppins down because I was like nine and I fucking snapped my knee. Yeah, it's no good. It was brutal. Anyways, Tampa side splitters, Tempe Improv, a bunch of dates. I'm going to Spokane. Spokane, whatever the fuck it is, Can. San Jose, uh, San Jose Improv, uh, DC Improv, way out in November, Nashville, I think in October, and uh, comedian Joe List. Subscribe to my YouTube. The special will be out soonish, right. and, uh, and we shot the special. It went great. Look at this content, king of content. New special coming out three in three years. Uh, I'm taping on St. Patty's Day, which I kind of regret now in Chicago. It's like after Dublin, Chicago is the biggest St. Patty's party in the country in the world but I, someone was just saying this because i someone else is recording and I, and I was like oh this is the month to record i said mark's recording the 17th and everyone at the table was like what is he retarded he's an I, idiot exactly but you sell tickets people are coming to see you they're not going to get blackout before seeing you i hope if you're doing a show at a bar room sure as fucking joe schmo i'd be like you're an idiot that's the dumbest thing i've ever heard right but they're not it's not like they're going to go hit the parade and be like ah <laughs> yeah. to, like if I if if I was drinking and, and Pearl Jam was playing on St. Patrick's Day, I'm a bad example. But, yes, yes. Uh, you know, there's I gonna think, be a couple bad eggs. I, I'll give them that. Maybe a couple, couple pickled eggs. eggs. Yeah, but we'll we'll make it work. And You'll on be there fine. Saturday. Thank it'll, you. It'll be great. Appreciate that, and uh, should be fun. And uh, MarkNormanComedy.com got some new dates coming up. Big tour coming. Going to Australia again. Going to England again. So uh, we're all over the road, and uh, Jark Attack, what do you got, Chuckster? I do a podcast called Fun Bearable, and I want to thank all the Tuesdays listeners because a ton of them came over, and the numbers are going up. Hey, there wow, you go. the opposite comments. of this, bud. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> a lot of great comments on the Kevin Ryan episode and the episodes with you guys. But this week, uh, we have a new episode with, it's going to this is gonna sound weird, it's actually the voices of Pinky in the Brain. No Whoa. way. Yeah. And one of them no is kidding. named uh, Rob Paulson, and he's like the most prolific voice actor of like this generation. He does like, he was part of the original Ninja Turtles. He does like a ton of Looney Tunes stuff, Rick and Morty. Oh, wow. And the other guy does like a ton of Simpsons, Futurama, stuff like that. Wow. All right. Yeah, we did a live panel at Rhode Island Comic Con no with, with those guys, and they're awesome. Their names are Rob Paulson and Maurice LaMarche. But funbearablepod.com or funbearable on any podcast app. There you go. Get on the Patreon. It's cooking. Oh, it's man. Hot. I had a guy hit me in Appleton. He goes, best Patreon I've ever seen. Hot, uh, not hot gay sets. Uh, Queef TV loves. Yeah, a lot of people love it. I'm getting a lot of messages being like, best Patreon ever. And, yes. Uh, Yes, I am not surprised to hear that. Those are from Chuck. We shot a new hot gay sets. We should say oh, that. Oh, yes. We did. We should say new that. New hot gay sets. We haven't done one right. a little bit. PS 109, and it was hot. Oh, we'll Mike see Cannon that. Mike Cannon was on it. Hey, all yeah, right. He yeah, was draw. great. We'll see that around Christmas time. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> right. But thanks, gang. We got to get you to 